Hey, welcome everybody to the uh, group coaching call for the Masterclass Elite program. This is just for the Masterclass Elite members. This is once every two weeks we get together. This is a very open line. It's a very informal get together. There are a lot of new members on this site. Obviously, in the last month, we've added a lot of new members, which has been fantastic. I'm excited to have you all on board. And for many of you, this is your first uh, live coaching call. And this is a live coaching call. I am actually standing here. Uh, at 4.02 p.m. on a uh, Thursday afternoon in uh, dreary, dank Duxbury, Massachusetts. So if you're listening to this on the um, website, uh, th this is a recording. If you're listening to us right now at that time, it is live. Uh, the whole point behind this is that the, originally the intent of these calls was to keep it very open. If anybody wanted to raise their hand and wanted to speak, uh, you could you could speak directly to me raise your hand and I will take you off mute and we will have a conversation and everyone on the call will hear that conversation as well so there's no confidentiality involved here everybody can hear exactly what you're talking about so if there's a particular property that you're dealing with and you want some advice on it uh, make sure that you and you want to keep it uh, close to the vest make sure that you do not uh, disclose any information about that property because everybody else can hear it and there's no guarantee that everybody's going to do the right thing. So just assume that. All right. So let me just start by giving you some of the um, uh, some of the disclaimers. And as you can see, for those people that have been on all of my other calls, I have fixed the the uh, process here. It doesn't float in like before. All right. So here's my disclaimer. I am an attorney. I am not your attorney. I will act like an attorney in these calls, but I will not. Um, represent you. I, uh, as a matter of fact, the best way to describe the extent of my services is one of on on a consulting basis. I'm only licensed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to practice law. I'm not licensed in other, other states. I do provide consulting services in those other states and I always recommend you uh, find local counsel and I will work with your local counsel uh, to help them through the entire ac uh, acquisition process. Um, there are different jurisdictional laws, uh, uh, contract issues in different uh, states that a local attorney will understand and know better than I uh, as to how to work through them. And I always use the example of the um, provision, which, what we call independent consideration. Uh, that is a provision that some real estate contracts have to have in certain states that's not required in other states. If you fail to put it in your contract in those states where it is required, you do not have a valid contract. So that is why you need local counsel to take care of you. All right? Uh, if you have any questions, uh, always send them to info at multifamilyinvestingacademy.com. If it's more of a support question, our support staff will take care of you. If it's more of a technical question, it gets bumped up to me, and I always try to respond. And I'll tell you something off the record. If you include your phone number, uh, you may get a phone call from me. Sometimes I just like to talk to the, you folks and uh, make sure that you're doing things correctly. That's the whole point of this particular process and this particular program. Um, this is an open forum. If I take you off mute and you have any questions, uh, just be courteous, kind, and forgiving. Just be, you know, um, thoughtful and uh, make sure you don't use any swear words This is being recorded um, and if there's anything that you don't want to have discussed if it's a private conversation send us an email at info at multifamilyinvestingacademy.com and we will take care of you all right um, now uh, just so you understand the technical aspect of this right now I'm not uh, checking for questions I will be checking for questions in a moment I'm not checking for anyone's having their hand up either. So, uh, but here's how it works. If you look on your screen to the right, uh, there's a block uh, from GoToWebinar with all the different things involved in there. You can raise your hand. If I see your hand up, uh, I will ask you online here in a discreet sort of way so nobody knows that it's you if you would like me to take you off mute. If you want me to take you off mute and you're, you feel free to ask a question in front of the whole entire crowd, which is totally fine, we're all friends here, uh, just uh, make a comment in the question block let, letting me know that that's okay to do, and then I'll take you off, off uh, mute and we'll have a nice little conversation, just the two of us in front of all of our friends, okay? Um, 
Uh, the other thing too is uh, let us know what you're going to need in the archive section. Let me explain this for a moment. Um, we are constantly obviously adding look over my shoulder videos, um, frequently asked questions uh, videos, uh, the um, the private money tutorials and the master class lessons. That, that, all of those are pretty much mapped out ahead of time. Um, the archive section I am constantly adding new things to that and here's what I want you guys to understand. In the next couple of months I'm still finalizing this. I thought I had it finalized and all kind of fell through at the last minute. Uh, I thought I had finalized the due diligence seminar here in Boston and because of some hotel screw-ups it does not look like it's going to happen in Boston uh, at the time that we expect it. So thanks to one of my uh, favorite clients uh, it was recommended that we move the site uh, more south and uh, like for instance around the November December period down around the Charleston or Florida area which I think is going to happen so in that particular time we're going to have uh, the due diligence seminar now for some of you that have logged into the membership site recently I think you'll see that uh, I think I'm pricing the due diligence seminar around fifteen hundred dollars if you're an elite member it's 495 so it's a huge discount if you're an elite member I really uh, uh, give a lot of kudos and um, uh, you know a benefit to being a, an elite member I really enjoy having you folks on board uh, now between now and then well, I think I think uh, at the end of this weekend I am going to post on the archive section all of my due diligence documents that I give out at the due diligence seminar. Elite members will have access to this over the next week. Uh, it'll, it'll, it will appear on the archive section. I believe there are over, easily over 30 exhibits that you will have access to uh, for due diligence information. It's just great stuff. Uh, and it's all the stuff that I teach at the due diligence seminar. So if you can make it to the seminar, great. Would love to have you. You will learn a ton. If you can't make it, the documents that will be provided during that weekend will be available to all of the elite members on the archive section. And uh, in addition to that, I happen to be looking for um, something the other day, and I found a whole stash of great training information that I didn't even know I had produced uh, and I'm going to throw that up on the archive section as well so there's going to be so much information more in that archive section you just I mean it, somebody said to me the other day they cannot believe how much information uh, that, that exists on that archive section but in addition if there's something that you need that you do not see there let us know we will find it for you if we have it in our in our archives or many times that you know, as as a law firm, we have so much, so many documents that we've produced over time. We might be able to just pull it out and, and post it right on the website. Just let us know what you need, and we are here for you. Okay, all right. Uh, let's get started here, and I'm going to um, hold on one second. Let me see if I can just. Uh, okay, here's here's the deal. Uh, get your pens ready. This is going to be kind of a unique session. Now, in the past. When I first started doing these group coaching calls, the whole intent was to be an open forum. People can talk, people can ask me questions. And what I found was that people were not asking me questions. I was standing up here for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, and, and they were just talking. And so what I realized was that to make this thing work and to make it uh, really uh, take off, uh, I should have a lesson produced and lesson ready to go. And if you go back on the, uh, on the um, membership site, uh, and you listen some, to some of the past group coaching calls, you'll you'll hear some great content, and I teach particular lessons. In this in this case, I'm actually going to show you two websites that elite members have recently brought to my attention that I didn't know about, but I've got to share them with you. They are really really good. So um, let me, um, I'm going to do a little quick little uh, presto change over here with my web, with my uh, internet connection, and I will be right back uh, with the first of these two websites. But get your pens and pencils ready because you're going to need to know the, the, the web address so that you can uh, access these sites as well, okay? I noticed that while I was making this change that someone had their hand up, uh, one of my friends, 
Uh, Donald, if, if you have a question you want me to take you off mute, just make a comment in the question section. As soon as I see that you are giving me permission to, um, uh, to make that change, I will do that. Uh, so, folks, I received um, from one of the elite members who happens to be on this call right now this particular website, and he wanted uh, my opinion on it. I had never seen this website before. It's called www.bankassetpoint.com. All right, this is a marketplace for bank assets. All right, this is where banks can put up their loans, their performing and non-performing loans, and their any type of REO property that they have, they can put it up on this website. Now, I based upon what I've seen so far, I'm under the impression that this particular website is in the early phases. Now, it's been uh, promoted by uh, one of the... Um, uh, one of the uh, industry associations, which is obviously a good sign, uh, but it is as far as the the um, the content or the the quantity of assets that they have uh, available on the site, uh, it's not all that great at this particular time. But you never know. I mean, some of the stuff that they they posted up here uh, are re it's really you know pretty good. I'm 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 very happy to see some of the stuff. So let me show you exactly how this program works now here's here's the way it works and I, I, I want to uh, you know dispel any any issues you, you might have the way they try to make it sound is as though it's a very exclusive website now you need to be a particular type of buyer in order to be approved for this particular website now I went on online and I said well you know I'm a I'm an attorney and I, I'm looking to use this site for my clients to help them buy assets and you know presto change I go check my inbox and I've been approved for my uh, registration uh, and but the thing is that with this they have two different types uh, two different sides of it they have the asset side and then they have the loan side so the, I, I just requested um, approval for the asset side so right now the, my registration can only look at the properties that they have listed on the site. I can't look at the loans that they have available, the non-performing loans or the loans that they're looking to sell off on. So I don't, I can't look at this and you're not going to be able to see it when I walk you through this site in just a moment. Now, what I want to stress for you from an acquisition standpoint is to understand the difference between acquiring assets and acquiring a loan okay now when you're buying a loan from a bank you're buying essentially a piece of paper when you're buying an REO or an asset from a bank a property from a bank you're buying a piece of real estate now the difference is that with a piece of real estate you will be able to borrow money against it you will be able to go out and get a hard money loan or a, a first mortgage against that particular property. So if you find a property on here that you like and it's real estate, you may be able to take it to a hard money lender or to a uh, another bank and get financing for that deal and buy it from the bank in that, in that manner. Now, if it's a loan that you're looking to acquire, you are not buying the real estate you are buying a piece of paper. You are buying essentially, by definition, a security. So you are not going to be able to get a loan on that. You are going to have to show up at the bank with all cash to make the deal happen. So when you're starting to look at this particular website and you're looking at loans, you need to understand that in order for you to make this thing happen, you need cash. Now, when the other issue is when you're buying a loan, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get that real estate. If it's a performing asset for all intents and purposes, the per person has performed under the terms of the mortgage and you can't just walk in and take that property away from them. They are doing everything right. By law, you cannot seize that property. If they are in default, and you own the note, you can foreclose on them. And then you'll have to go through a foreclosure process in order to seize that asset, but then you know you run the risk of, of potentially them you know, filing bankruptcy or throwing the property into you know, uh, receivership, all those types of things that you need to take into consideration when you're thinking about investing in loans, all right? 
In this particular case, I have signed up for the assets, so I'm looking at the real estate. Let me show you how this works. Okay, now as you can see here, you can set up watch, watch lists. And in this particular case, look at the, what they have at the top here. They have existing loans, newly originated loans, commercial property, assets wanted, other opportunities. Watch what happens when I click on existing loans. It's going to tell me that I'm no good. It'll say, sorry, you do not have access to view the loan listings. All right. If I wanted to see the loan listings, I could easily go back out to the home page and register to see the loans, tell them who I am, tell them that I'm doing this on behalf of clients, and I'm sure I can get access to this particular site. But right now, all I've signed up for are the assets. So let's take a look at the assets. Okay, I'm getting some uh, notes here from people saying that the um, screen is not being updated. Uh, right now, I am looking at a web page. Let me just make sure. Let me take let me take you back to the beginning. That was all me. Uh, here's the website right here. It's um, bankassetpoint.com. And listen, uh, some of you, this is this has worked out in the past. Let me just let me just uh, pause the uh, screen here. Uh, in the past, sometimes when I've had some mentorship phone calls and I've done these types of things and I've and I've screwed up and I and and uh, I'm doing something that. Uh, it would benefit you if you told me I was doing it wrong. Some of you have my cell phone number uh, and you send me texts. Uh, feel free if you have my cell phone number and you're on this call and I'm doing something wrong, send me a text because uh, sometimes I can't see those questions uh, right away. Uh, so please uh, let me know, um, you know and, uh, and I will make sure that I fix the problem. That's always worked in the past when somebody has uh, sent me a direct a, a direct text. Okay, so here it is. This is the bankassetpoint.com website. Um, I've, I've already logged in. Uh, you have loans, you have commercial REO, and you have the, the community page where you can connect with other uh, people, you know, people giving loans and what have you. Um, bankassetpoint.com. This is where you want to go. Now, let me just click on the commercial REO because I, I, now I'll click on the loans just so you can see again what I was talking about a moment ago. I am not registered to see the loans. And so there you have it. It says, sorry, you do not have access to view loan listings. And so I'm out of luck. But this is where I would go back in. If I really wanted to see these, I could go back in and re-register and ask for access to the loans. And I do not think they're going to deny me access to the loans. I think they want to have as many people in this program as possible. So, uh, But in this particular case, when they ask me questions to, to get uh, signed up, the ones that pertained best were the ones where I was on the uh, uh, representing clients who are looking to buy commercial property. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the commercial property side. All right, um, all right. So here's what they've given me. I see, some, I see some hands up. I will get to your hands in just a moment. Uh, so here's what we've got here. They've got uh, 144. I, I checked on multifamily. Let me just check on multifamily and do a, a search strictly on multifamily. As you can see, they have 140 listings. And I like to search based upon, let's do the highest prices, highest to low, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, the issue that I've had with this particular website is the it's very geographically centered. Georgia, West Virginia, uh, Illinois, some California. That seems to be the most... Uh, the majority of the listings that they have out there. That's where I see uh, most everything. You see, you see they've got this property down here, Barron Hills uh, Estates in Rhode Island. I've seen that one for years. That thing has been, you know, kicking around for years. Holy cow. You know, and that thing just hasn't budged. But here is another site that you can go to to find multifamily opportunities that you will not potentially find on LoopNet. Now, I have not searched loop net for these opportunities and that is what I recommend you do if you see something on here that you like grab the address run over to loop net and find out if it's listed on loop net if it is then yeah you know bank asset point may be just another glorified loop net but if it isn't then this is another unique source where you can find off, you know, non-LoopNet-like deals that are owned by the banks and they're looking to unload them. So try that. Always check LoopNet. Whenever somebody tells you that they've they've got an off-market deal and they give you the name and the address, run 
for the hills to loop net to find out if it's truly off off market. If it's not on LoopNet, then go ahead and take that address and stick it into Google uh, search bar and do a search on the, the address and see if it's been listed at any time by anybody else. I always recommend you do this because there are so many posers in this business that when they tell you they've got an off-market deal, don't believe a word they're saying. Always confirm it for yourself. All right, so this is the Bank Asset Point website that is showing 140 listings owned by banks and the banks are trying to unload them. All right? That is the first site I want you to check out from this particular group coaching call. Now, that is the property side. Let's talk about money side here right now, all right? Uh, let's see. Now, let me tell you a story. And, you'll, and the longer you're in this business, the more you're going to hear these types of stories. A lot of people go out to these gurus camps uh, for trying to find uh, sponsors, key principles, money. And some of these gurus actually make huge money just by having you there for the weekend to try to put you in a room with other people who are all looking for money and trying to find what goes on. One of the sources for money that we have seen are what are called family offices. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what the heck is a family office? What that means is there are a lot of extremely wealthy families that have set up trusts, and these families need to invest their money in different, uh, different opportunities, and a lot of them are investing in multifamily. Now, personal experience, professional experience, I, um, I happen to know one guy who is working for one of these family offices, and he only gets paid when a deal closes. And so he and his partners are essentially working for these family offices. They have a blank check, and their job is to go out there and find these, these multifamily uh, opportunities. I spoke to him and I said, what is your, your criteria? And he said, uh, $30 million and up. And I said, oh, okay. All right, that kind of narrows it down quite a bit. Now, what quality asset just for, you know, giggles? And he said, A, B, or C class property. I said, You're, you mean to tell me that you are looking to buy C class property at $30 million and higher? He goes, yep, that's what these people will buy. And I said, okay, fine. So I spoke to him the other day. He happened to be on site in Chicago. They just bought a $35 million property, a B-minus class property, just on the outskirts of Chicago. Uh, and he made a, he made a nice payday uh, because of it. Now, one of my clients happens to have an $80 million opportunity, so we're trying to present that to these guys to see what they can come back with. So these family offices do exist. They do make these deals happen. They have the funds in order to, to make it happen. And one of my clients sent me this particular website on a workshop where you can learn how to work with these family offices in order to raise capital. So for some of you looking out there thinking, like, where am I going to find my money? You know, this is an opportunity, but I do not recommend you just go running out there and start knocking on doors. I think you need to understand what it takes in order to make this stuff happen. As you can see, this, the name of the workshop is Raising Capital from Family Offices and High Net Worth Investors. And it's coming up on October uh, 17th. I believe it's in New York City at the Harvard Club. Uh, and let me just show you, and this is kind of interesting um, as we scroll down here. This is, let me just scroll down. Check out the, uh, the agenda. Look what's happening at 10 o'clock. Exploring single and multifamily office models of operations. So they have in their you know, strategy how you present and work with them for multifamily uh, uh, models, okay? So that is the type of thing you want to understand and you want to, um, before you get out there and start going after these opportunities, you want to make sure that you've got your deal all put together perfectly so that when you walk into these family offices, you look great. You've got everything down exactly the way it's supposed to be. So 
you know, I, I'm, I'm presenting this. I think it's a great idea. I think you all should might want to check into it. I think it's like five hundred or four hundred and ninety five dollars. Uh, full disclosure, I don't make a dime. I don't even know who this guy is. Uh, I just think, you know, if there's an opportunity where you can learn how to find private money through these family offices, and this guy's done it before in the past, and he's going to teach you how to do it, I think that's a great start. For 500 bucks, uh, that's that's pretty good. That's a that's a good way for you you to uh, open up doors. Now, for many of those gurus out there teaching you how to find money, this is not typically a way that they, they recommend. I mean, it's usually, you know, private individuals, uh, friends and family, real estate investment clubs, those types of things. I really think the family office is, is a great opportunity. Hopefully, uh, we will be able to put something together with my client for that $80 million deal, but, um, you know, we're just going to have to sit back and wait. So, yeah, as you can see, it's event pricing of five ninety five. So, this particular website, if you don't see it on your screen, it's... Um, wilsonconferences.com forward slash family hyphen capital and uh, that will give you uh, a good little understanding of how another source where you can find money for your deals okay and the thing that amazed me when I talked to this guy um, uh, who just did this deal and he said 30 million dollars is the minimum um, right away my, my thought was okay they, they're only looking for A and B class properties but then he came back and said no they'll do C class properties as well which was actually kind of a shocker to me but when you're looking at some of those major metropolitan areas like New York City and Chicago I mean to 30 million dollars of a C class you, you know you can buy a 200 unit uh, C class property or you know maybe 300 unit C class property for that that type of price um, and that's just typical in that in that marketplace. And you'd never do that in the Dallas Fort Worth area, but you would do it in a a, a major metro area like L.A., San Francisco, Miami, and not necessarily Miami, but New York, Washington, uh, that area. So it does make sense what he said when he started talking those numbers. All right. So those are the two websites that I really wanted to stress and work on with you today. I think there's uh, great resources. I'm actually going to take that. Um, the bank asset point, uh, I'm going to um, add that to the handout section of the master class lesson one where I show you all the different places to find deals. That particular site is not part of my original uh, presentation, but I'm going to add it and just keep adding different sites uh, so that when you, uh, you know, when you sign up and when you get that master class uh, program lesson one, uh, you just are inundated with particular sites as to go and uh, find more deals. Uh, non loop net like deals so all right let me um, uh, open it up right now I think I have some uh, people with their hands raised yes okay so uh, let me just check get some permission from people um, okay all right let me just take some of these questions right down the road. Uh, one of them is, uh, first one is from Terry. Terry, you have your hand up. Terry, uh, if you can just tell me um, if you want me to um, uh, take you off of mute, and uh, I will be more than happy to do that. Donald, same with you. Donald, I see you have your hand up as well. I don't see a question for you. If you just want to type something into the block uh, and let me know if um, you want me to take you off of mute, and I will uh, answer your question. Uh, okay, all right, let me see here. Yes, okay, Terry, let me do this. All right, first time, here we go. Uh, okay, Terry, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can, Charles. Can you hear me? Yes, Terry, you sound good. Go ahead. Welcome aboard. You're like the first time I've ever done this. Go ahead, lay it on us. All right, it's the maiden voyage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had wrote in uh, just now on the uh, question, but I'll ask it now. On a mixed-use property, how does it fit into the equation on the NLI and the debt service coverage ratio on a storefront with multifamily apartment units above it? Let's say there's 10 multifamily bedroom apartment units above a storefront office location. Okay. All right. First off, the NOI is going to be the NOI. I mean, that's going to be uh, unique. Uh, I tell you what, Terry, I'm going to, I'm going to take you off. 
sounded like the L was going by right by your head, Terry. Um, so I, I just took you off mute, and I'm going to answer your question. Um, okay. The as far as the NOI, the question goes, uh, how do you calculate the NOI and the debt coverage ratio on a mixed-use property where you have retail on the, on the downstairs and you have um, uh, uh, apartments upstairs? Okay. The issue isn't so much with the NOI. The NOI is going to be the NOI based upon no matter what, uh, what style it is. The debt coverage ratio is going to be the same. You're going to have to pick your sleep number. Which, what's your debt coverage ratio that you're comfortable with? I mean, typically, if you're looking at a higher caliber property, like an A-class property, you can go with a lower debt coverage ratio, like around 1.3 or so, because you tend to have higher caliber uh, residents and tenants who pay you on time. Um, collections and delinquencies are not so much of an issue with A-class property, so you can start to live with a better debt coverage ratio than, uh, than you can on a B or C-class property. Uh, but if it's a B or C-class property, you've got to really draw the line in the sand and understand what your debt coverage ratio is that makes you sleep well at night. For me, I look at, at trying to work the numbers such, such that I always have at least a 1.6 debt coverage ratio. That may sound like a lot, but you know what, guys? I've been in this situation before. I like to sleep at night, and a 1.6 debt coverage ratio works for me. So the, the major issue that you're dealing with here with a mixed-use property is when you go to analyze the numbers, you've got to make sure that you break the two numbers apart and you look at the, you look at the apartments differently than you do with the retail. And the reason why you do that is because in different market plates, places, and with different types of assets, you're going to have different vacancy rates and different absorption rates, which means that you might be able to, uh, you know, the, the occupancy of, of the multifamily asset uh, might be, you know, in that market, it might be, uh, you know, 10% vacancy. But retail is running at 25% vacancy. Okay, now you need to understand that difference between the two styles and make sure that you use those numbers in your calculations appropriately. The other issue has to do with the absorption rate. Now, for those of you that, that don't understand what absorption rate is, that's how quickly, based upon the market, how quickly can we get these places leased up once they become vacant? Now, typically, the absorption rate on a multifamily is a lot faster than the absorption rate on a retail property. A lot of times you'll see retail sit vacant for months and months and months, and you do not see that on a multifamily. You know, you could you could turn the unit. My, my properties, uh, you know, we 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 clean it up, we turn it, they're ready to roll, and they're leased the next weekend. Well, on multifamily, that happens a lot. On retail, it doesn't. So you need to understand when you're looking at a mixed-use property, those are the type of things you need to take into consideration when you're evaluating the property. I hope that answered your question for you, Terry. All right, so let me move on. Uh, let's see. All right, Fernando. Fernando, drop me a line on the bottom. Let me know if I can take you off mute and, uh, and have you speak because you're next up. Here we go. Oh, good. All right. Here we go. Fernando. Fernando. All right, let's see. How you doing? Let me see. Uh, what did I have? What kind of question do I have here for you? Let me just read it. Uh, uh, database of FO and MFO with con. Okay, uh, they also offer a database of of of. Um, uh, what do you mean by FO and MFO? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead, Fernando. I'm sorry. So, that was just a comment on the Wilson conferences. They have a database available uh, of these. Uh, it, family offices and multi-family offices, some of these uh, groups, they may house uh, several families in one office. So that's a multi-family office. Okay. And so you have a, a big mixture of asset classes. And, right. You know, some will only do uh, energy type investments where you have others, like you were saying earlier, about multi-family. Right. I was saying multi-family as if it was the property multifamily property, but it was multifamily right. offices for multi offices. different off, different families within that, that office. Right. So That's right. The asset manager manages several families. Exactly. In that same office. Right. Right. And so they, they offer a database of that, and that's something that I'm pursuing at the moment. 
Uh, the only thing, and that you can get the family offices worldwide, so you can attract uh, you know money from from uh, from abroad, overseas, and whatnot. And um, how? Tell me how how successful have you been? I mean, what 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 uh, what have you done with it so far? Well, I just started. Okay. Um, it's kind of in the in the sorting stage because not all family offices are real estate right uh, minded as far as investments uh, uh, go. So I'm in the sorting phase, uh, just kind of putting it out there and see if I get a response, uh, if they're even interested in real estate uh, assets at all. Uh, and then, of course, it's a funnel. You're going to narrow that down, and only so many offices are going to be uh, interested in that in that asset class. Exactly. Yeah, and you've got to really, really ask the tough questions. I see this a lot uh, with with clients of mine and students in this program that come to me and say, "Hey, I've got this this uh, you know woman uh, who has a lot of uh, friends and family back in Pakistan. They want to invest in the U.S. They want to buy real estate. They want to pay all cash." How do I approach this? And the thing you've got to always ask is, what type of real estate are they looking for? Exactly. If you're if you're just looking for multi, if you're just searching all day long for multifamily, and these people want offices, well, then hey, that's a great story. But you're never gonna get, you're never gonna close on a deal. You've got exactly. to ask the tough questions early on to figure out what the flavor of their money is, or exactly. we're just wasting our time. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like talking to a private lender. You've got to feel them out and see where their temperature is at on certain types of, you know, asset class as far as real estate. Because I mean, if if you don't, if you've got to qualify them just like you're qualifying a deal. Does this does this uh, money source potentially fit what I'm trying to do? If not, you know, it's probably not going to work. Right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now is sifting through that database and. Uh, Kind of just putting the feelers out and see what type of assets they're interested in uh, deploying, you know, their capital toward. Right. I mean, when I when I sat down and I think there's a question here is, um, have you ever contacted any of these uh, family offices in the past? Ronnie's asking me that question. And Ronnie, the only time that I've ever had direct con uh, contact with them was through this person uh, here in Boston. And what happened was it was it was a um, it was, it's my attorney. You know, even though I'm an attorney, I have my own attorneys. Uh, uh, one of my attorneys is, uh, you know, this guy, we, we've known each other since we were freshmen in high school. And, um, you know, he, his office is up in Boston. And he said, hey, listen, I got a guy in my office that uh, is out there buying um, apartment complexes. And I, I thought, oh, what? really? Tell me more. And that's when we set up the lunch and I went to meet with him. So that was the first and only time, Ronnie, where I've had any type of involvement, direct involvement with somebody from a family office. And, you know, getting back to what, um, uh, what, uh, um, what Fernando was saying, and Fernando, I'm going to put you back on mute uh, right now. Sure. Um, what Fernando was saying is, uh, you know, I really went up there to have lunch with him to find out what exactly he's looking for. Because I have a lot of clients that have deals, and I want to match them up with a guy like this. And so I made sure I asked the tough questions. Like, what are you looking for? When this guy told me $30 million, I thought, oh, well, all right, all right, that kind of, you know, prices a lot of some of my clients' deals out of the way. Um, but, uh, what type, if I found a 30 million, you know, what types of properties are you looking for? And I got to tell you, having been in this business for years and, you know, you hear me talk about this quite a bit where I say, you know, there's a bumper sticker on my car that I'm, uh, you know, life is too short to own C class property. When this guy told me that they do $30 million deals for A, B and C class property right away, kind of the BS meter went up in my head and I thought, $30 million deal for a C-class property? Really, pal? Come on. And then to find out that this guy actually did one just outside of Chicago, a very big deal for $35 million. Okay, you know what? He's right. That's exactly uh, how it works, and um, and he did do that. So uh, so to answer your question, Ronnie, that is really um, you know where I've uh, the the ex extent that I've had it before. So um, all right, let me uh, move on here. I've got Colin's got a question. He says, Richard, uh, Richard, I guess it, my name's Richard now. Uh, I wanted to point out that Wilson does have a group on LinkedIn. I am connected to him, and there are 70,000 members of that group that post opportunities all the time. Oh, my gosh, Colin, that's great. Okay, folks, 
Colin has just given you another great place to go out and find opportunities. What you want to do is go on LinkedIn. If you haven't done this yet, what are you waiting for? I, sh I teach you that in the first lesson. You've got to be on LinkedIn. You've got to have, an, have uh, sign up for groups. So what you're going, going to do is you're going to uh, go onto LinkedIn. You're going to click on the, on the um, I think it's the contact button, and you're going to drop down to groups. And then you're going to do a search on groups for family uh, you know, family uh, owned um, or fa um, uh, what, are, what are we looking for? Family office capital raising or Wilson conferences. And once you find that group that this Richard Wilson is uh, is putting together, uh, you want to request membership in that group. And then what you also want to do is uh, on email updates, you want to get updates on everything that happens on that group, either on a daily or a weekly basis. My recommendation is you do it on a weekly basis. I mean, many of you have jobs on, uh, out there while you're trying to build up your, your multifamily side. So the thing is that if you started getting daily updates, you will be inundated. You won't even look at them after a while. And if you do weekly updates on Saturday morning before before the kids get up, you can open up your email. You can read all the things that happened on this Wilson Conference LinkedIn group over the last week, and you can get caught up that way. So uh, that's how I would recommend doing it. Colin, thank you so much. That's great advice. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, let me keep moving on here. And I, uh, Ronnie, let me, uh, uh, Ronnie, uh, I'm going to get down to the bottom of questions in, in a moment. If you could just answer me, if I've answered your question correctly, have you ever contacted any of these family offices in the past? I want to make sure that you're taken care of. Uh, okay. Question is, when is it gonna, going to be the due diligence event? Okay. All right, folks, let me explain to you what's going on in the due diligence. What originally happened was we were set to do it in uh, the end of October. Then we had a, a scheduling snafu with the hotel. We were going to do it in uh, Boston. Um, and then we started talking to the hotel, and, you know, November is really half a month with Thanksgiving. And then December is half a month. But what we figured is that if we can get the due diligence in the, in the Shark Tank weekend and subsequent weekends, uh, in December, that's probably how we're going to end up doing this, and we're going to do it because it's December. I do believe me, trust me. I can't stand cold weather, and I do not want to send people up to Boston in December. So what we're looking at now is either Florida or my favorite spot, Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, and so you know that's that's kind of the. Um, uh, where we're looking to do it now I'm going to get that finalized by next week the websites going to going to get up uh, folks listen if you're interested if you're serious about this business this particular due, due, due diligence seminar is hardcore all right this is not a rah-rah session this is not a a sales-a-thon like some of the other uh, weekends you've been to this one you come in on Saturday morning at nine o'clock and we work straight through until 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And I take you through the entire due diligence process. By the time you are through that weekend, you will understand every aspect of the, of the contracting process. Once you get a deal, once you submit an offer and you get the deal closed, you will understand the entire process. It is, it is a, you know, essentially I kind of make fun of people when they show up in this weekend because I look at them and I'm like, are you kidding me, people? This is, this is tough stuff and I'm going to take you through the tough stuff and by the time you're done you will have so much confidence in your ability but man it is a work weekend I'll tell you that right now so um, stay tuned for those those event dates they are coming up next week I've got to get them finalized I absolutely have to get them finalized so all right um, give me one second my next question has given me a disclaimer that I need to read before I uh, announce it to all of you. So hold on one second. One of the members on this group, good friend of mine, love this guy to death, uh, and he is saying, and now write this down and contact me directly, and I will screen you out before I send your name to this friend of mine because uh, I don't want him inundated with everybody uh, you know, uh, uh, fooling around. He is working on, and, and let me tell you something, this is legitimate. I know this guy for a fact, and, and if he says he's doing it, this is he's doing it. He says, I'm working on two different owner-financed multifamily deals. One of them is in North Georgia. It's 15 units, and two 11 units 
in Central Florida Gulf Coast. Those are both seller finance, owner finance. Now, what I mean by that, and I think I've had this conversation with him in the past, and he can clarify for this uh, for me here, is no bank involved. It's not the seller is going to give you a 5% financing. The seller is going to finance these deals for you. So there's no bank involved. All right, so he is going to assign these contracts. He's going to have them under contract, and he's going to assign them to whoever is interested. So you're going to have to pay him an assignment fee in order to get these deals. So if it's something that you're interested in, info at multifamilyinvestingacademy.com. I will forward that information on to my client, my friend here, and then he will be back in touch with you to vet you out. And... Uh, and obviously, I want to make sure that you know I can do anything I can for both parties to make sure that the deal gets done. Uh, you know, so if anybody needs any help with that, uh, not not meaning the financing aspect, but if we need help structuring the deal, uh, definitely uh, keep me in mind. So I'm I'm here to help. So if anybody is interested in two um, two deals, two owner finance deals, one in North Georgia for 15 units and two 11 units. Uh, in Central uh, Florida, unless I'm reading that incorrectly, and the second property is 211 units. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm reading that correctly or incorrectly in Central Florida. I believe it's 211 units in uh, Central Florida. Um, send me that email to info at multifamilyinvestingacademy.com, and I will get that taken care of for you as well. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. All right, Fernando, I think you have a question about, oh, okay. Um, let's see. All right. Oh, shoot. All right, uh, Terry asked a question. Have I found any success with uh, working with asset managers in the area of commercial multifamily assets? And I'll, I'll be I'm totally honest with you, Terry. I have not. It's not because, you know, it's not to say that it doesn't exist or happen. I just really haven't had that much interaction with asset managers uh, you know, bank-owned properties and that type of thing. Now, let me just uh, say that um, we own, my my family owns um, you know, about 200 uh, single-family homes uh, in the central part of the country. And uh, the people that we are working with on those particular assets have, uh, you know, figured that we can get in there and, you um, uh, they have an in with a bank down there who has approximately another 200 homes that they want us to take over as well. Um, that is an example of a, an asset manager uh, for a multifamily or single family, a portfolio style investment where we might be able to get our hands on that for a very, very good deal. Um, the reason why that is, uh, you know, kind of unique uh, is we kind of have an in with that particular bank and so what we have found is that it, it's a lot easier to work with asset managers of small and regional banks than it is with the big Bank of America's or the Wells Fargo or what have you you can get a lot more creative and you can solve their problems because they have problems with all this REO that they have on their books huge problems and you can get in there and solve their problems easier if it's a smaller bank than you can if it's a larger bank. So that is the that's you know the situation we find ourselves in right now with the assets that we own down in, in the Midwest, um, in the South Central. Uh, but it's it's you know and and I recommend that you know as I mentioned in that in our first video, the first masterclass video with a Bauer Financial. You can find those properties, find those banks that are smaller regional banks that have problems. Uh, you can go on Borrow Financial and find those those particular banks and the people that, that you want to speak to and start dialing for dollars that way. So hopefully that helps. All right. All right. Okay, now, uh, Fernando, you have a question about the Earnest Money Deposit Program. Uh, right now, the Earnest Money, the, the funds for the Earnest Money uh, Program are in use. Uh, I'm trying to find other investors to come in with that. Uh, but, Fernando, if you want to just um, 
send me an email and we can set up a, a private conversation so I can explain to you exactly how the earnest money deposit program works. Um, uh, but right now, uh, we have to wait for some of these funds to get cleared out uh, and come back into the program before we can start lending, and it's not lending as a matter of fact, uh, before we can start using uh, our investors' earnest money deposit programs, uh, earnest deposit money uh, again. So, uh, but I want to, I'll be more than happy to explain to you how that program works. Just shoot me an email at info at multifamily uh, investing academy. Uh, I appreciate that and I see you said yes and uh, we will do that soon. All right. Now, um, I did get a correction from my friend. He said, it is, yes, it's 111 unit in Florida. So uh, that is that. Those are the two deals. So the two properties, one in North Georgia and one in Florida. Uh, so um, if you're interested, send me that email. And typically, what I do in that particular case, just so people don't are, are not beating down my door all the time, is I am just going to forward your email on to my friend, and he will contact you directly. I'll act as a conduit, but he will contact you directly. Uh, I try to to back out of it. I hook the two of you up uh, and then uh, take it on from that point on. Um, all right, so last question that I have here, if anybody has anything else, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer it, but we're running out of questions, which is great because we're coming up on uh, an hour. Uh, the question is, would C-Class make sense in a metro market on Section 8 multi-properties? Rent money is almost guaranteed or a major portion of it. Okay. Listen, uh, first off, you have to understand how Section 8 works uh, from a financing standpoint. First off, uh, you know, you can get, when we say Section 8, there are different types of Section 8. I mean, right now, with this particular fund, we're working on what's called a HAP contract, which means the whole entire property is Section 8. Uh, otherwise, there are Section 8-like properties, which are market rate properties that allow Section 8 on them. Now, in those particular cases, what you have to understand, if you're looking to take over that type of a property and you're looking to buy it, you've got to go to the to the bank and the bank is going to ask you, well, how many Section 8 people do you have here? And typically, and this is something you want to check with your lender, is typically the underwriting guidelines require no more than 30% of the residents are Section 8 residents. Okay? Now, let's just us girls here let's let's talk turkey so to speak section 8 is a different type of property now section 8 can be great or it can be your worst nightmare the first thing you need to understand about section 8 is how is the section 8 office in your marketplace working are they pro landlord or are they pro tenant and I can tell you if you have a bad relationship with a section 8 office life will be miserable for you if you have a good relationship they are your best friends so you've got to understand going into the deal how is this particular property interacting with section 8 now, here's one of the clues, and this is something that we teach in the Due Diligence Weekend. If you have a property that is a prime candidate for Section 8, but you have no Section 8 residents on the property, and you say, well, why, is, why aren't you renting to any Section 8? And they give you, the broker gives you some knee-jerk reaction like, oh, well, the seller doesn't like working with the Section 8 office. And so uh, they've decided as a business that they're not going to work with Section 8. Folks, if the property is a prime candidate for Section 8 and that is the excuse you hear, your BS meter should go up high. And what you should do is walk down to the Section 8 office and say, hey, I'm thinking about buying Oak Ridge Apartments. Why are there no Section 8 residents living in there? And sit back and shut up. Wait for the answer. Because those people in the Section 8 office will tell you exactly why Oak Ridge has no Section 8 candidates. And it might be because the Section 8 office 
hates Oak Ridge and will never send anybody to that office, was never able to get any units qualified. They had a, an absolute blowout with the owner and, it'll, and you guys are on the blacklist. And if you think you're going to buy it and because it's a change in ownership, you're going to walk in there and start getting Section 8 people into your building, they're going to tell you, no, you are on the blacklist. We're not renting to you. And they can do it. And that's how powerful these Section 8 offices are in different regions. So make sure you understand that before you go into the property. I mean, I, we, let, let me just tell you, folks, the property that we just bought has no Section 8. It should have Section 8. It, it, it was a portfolio of single-family homes. About five years ago, the owner that we bought this property from was doing some shady deals with his tenants and Section 8. Section 8 caught wind of it and shut down the whole entire management operations. In other words, typically what they'll do is they'll blacklist a property. In this case, what this owner did was so bad, they blacklisted the entire, entire portfolio. So now we are taking over this property with that problem on our and looking us in the face. And it doesn't change because you change ownership. Because that Section 8 office has very long memories. So that's something that you want to take into consideration when you're looking at a property and thinking about Section 8. You've got to understand what the underwriting guidelines are for the, sale, for the um, uh, underwriter. You've got to understand why are there no Section 8 people on here when there should be. Um, and part of that problem was one property that we owned at one time, you know, a two-bedroom um, unit in uh, that particular marketplace for Section 8 was, was renting for $800 and we were getting $600. So part of our strategy was that, hey, if we get these people, if we take over this property and start getting Section 8 in here, we can go from 600 to 800 in no time flat. But we didn't know that Section 8 wouldn't even give us the time of day. You wouldn't believe how many donuts I delivered to the Section 8 office for nothing. We never got anything out of that office. So that's, you know, don't think that Section 8 is automatically gonna come to your, to, to your rescue. You've got to understand exactly what the relationship has been in the past uh, regarding that. Um, but otherwise, Section 8 is great. I mean, they put your money in your account, you know, first of the month, every month. Um, you know, granted, there's a co-pay. I'm using air quotations here uh, where the, the resident uh, is responsible for um, a certain amount. Um, but, you know, and the thing is, if they don't pay, you can evict them. And I recommend you evict them if they don't pay it. I mean, for crying out loud, Section 8 is paying 800 bucks, and all these people have to do is pay 50 bucks, and they don't pay the 50 bucks. Really? Come on, folks. That's unbelievable. So that is, um, hopefully, uh, Terry, I just answered your question about uh, Section 8. Uh, I like Section 8, I, but the thing is, if you start to turn your property into a Section 8 property, which is different than what you bought, you're going to get an entirely different makeup. Uh, and you're totally changing the face of that, that particular property. So uh, it's definitely um, uh, something to, uh, to think about uh, when you're looking at these deals. Um, and, uh, you know, t and the other thing, too, is you, you need to understand when you look at a rent roll, uh, being able to distinguish in the rent roll who is Section 8 and who isn't. And sometimes different landlords have different codes uh, for Section 8 people. I mean, one time we were looking at a property trying to figure out who the Section 8 people were and who weren't. Section 8 people were those people whose names were all in capital letters. Okay. And everybody else was non-Section 8. That's how the this particular owner, owner distinguished on his management system who was Section 8 and who wasn't. Um, okay. So, um, that's that. And uh, if anybody has any other questions, uh, I just got uh, a message from my friend, and I will um, I will talk to you all soon. Uh, but uh, that is the end of this uh, this call. It's just over just about an hour. Um, it's uh, been uh, great talking with all of you. More good questions. I hope these websites have been helpful for you. And um, uh, and I will get this call up on the. Uh, a website very shortly. Make sure you check it out. I'm going to send out an email to everybody letting you know when I've put up those due diligence uh, documents so you can all go grab those and, and start using them. Um, and then um, uh, and then also, um, you know, when I finalize the due diligence dates, I'd love to see you all there. I price it so that, uh, you know, you all can come. It's, it's really a great 
incredibly educational weekend. Um, and just just uh, so you know, um, one of the best parts of the weekend, it, uh, when last time I did this, I was blown away. Uh, but at the end of the weekend, I did a checklist. I did a deal flow checklist where I showed people um, what it takes to get a deal done step by step by step and yeah, I mean it was like you know a deer in the headlights everybody's eyes lit right up and they were like wow this is the, the best part of the whole entire week and it was the last thing so I will be doing that again as well but also that document I will put up on the uh, archive site uh, for all of you to, to review so and uh, yep thank you Carolyn I appreciate that I appreciate uh, compliments and uh, if anybody has any questions info at multifamilyinvestingacademy.com I will uh, talk to you all soon thanks for coming everybody Bye-bye.